Laugh it up, fuzzballs. We're here at the Star Wars Identities exhibition in London, packed full of original props, costumes, models, and early artwork from the collection of George Lucas himself. To talk us through it, we met with Leila French from the Lucasfilm Archive. The items for this exhibit were really chosen based on first that we were going to tell the story of human identity or the science of human identity. And once the scientific committee that we worked with kind of outlaid that framework, um, and then we overlaid it with the Star Wars story of Anakin and Luke, it kind of immediately just made it obvious what objects we had to have. Also, I always want to include all the main characters because if there's an expectation when you come to a Star Wars exhibition, we want to hit all the right notes for the super fans. Um, they have expectations and we want to meet them and actually I want to surprise and exceed them with things they don't know about. For the casual fan or those that haven't seen Star Wars, we need to give them sort of the Star Wars 101 introduction um, and then the, we get down into the more deeper content um, we can add in some unusual pieces and that's where it gets fun. In the original films, you know, you have to remember 1977 people didn't save everything from a film that they made. You know, they made the movie, everything went away or was returned back to the costume department or it was borrowed. So for George to save even the models that he did was unusual and he had the foresight because he's very innovative to, to know that if he knew that if A New Hope was going to be a success he'd have two more films to make and he didn't want to have to remake certain ships from scratch. So he kind of was saved everything hoping it was a success, which it was. Um, and then he got to reuse those same ships and make more ships for the new films. And then he saved some costumes, and things like that. So for that time period, what he saved was quite a lot. The main collections at the archives at Skywalker Ranch, um, which is where George you know, helped make his new movies, episodes one, two, and three, but it's a very large collection, probably one of the most complete film collections uh, that exists today because George had the foresight to save quite a bit from the early films and we saved almost everything we could from the new films. Mm -hmm. So for the fans that collect, there certainly is holy grail items. I know that if they got in my archive, they would probably faint. <laughs> quite a few of the items are very sturdy. The models in the ship case, you know, they actually have held up beautifully over the last 40 years. They um, Every now and then a tiny bit will fall off and we can restore it. The costume fabrics are a little more fragile, so we have to be careful about lighting and we use museum um, quality conservation and museum um, standards for exhibition. Surprisingly, from the new films, um, episode two, there was a scene set on Utapau where these beautiful set designs, um, these little miniature model buildings, um, and they were gorgeous and we tried to tour them and they immediately just crumbled. They were not built to tour um, in the same way that some of the stuff from like A New Hope or Empire was. So sadly, they're sitting at the archive and the Death Star is at the archive and too fragile to tour. So there's a few things that we know that we can't really just ship around the world. 